The A220 seemed like a very promising aircraft with good fuel efficiency for shorter flights. With one of the newest designs in the market, the A220 is one of the most sophisticated aircraft. When the C-Series was presented, airlines ordered big amounts of it. Delta, Swiss and Air Canada to name a few. Even Air Baltic's whole fleet consists of A220s. But Boeing and Bombardier, the former owner of the program, began to offer big discounts to airlines. In the early days, the profitability was questionable. Finally, Bombardier sold the program to Airbus, who made it one of the best-selling jets. Nowadays, Embraer E2 jets are a rarity compared to the A220. But the A220 has a lot of problems, as every new aircraft has, from its beginnings to this day. The problems concerns almost every customer, with a variety of problems that got fixed, but from time to time new problems emerged and there is currently no end in sight. The latest grounding was due to supply chain issues in a lower life cycle than expected for the Pratt & Whitney engines that Air Senegal and Air Tanzania even spoke about joining forces to fight for compensations or to take a variety of other measures with or against the engine manufacturer. Also, Swiss and other airlines experienced with the A220 multiple uncontained engine failures Due to these problems, Air Baltic, for example, had to lease aircraft, which is associated with additional costs. Lufthansa CEO Carsten Spohr said, Way down in the supply chains, there are elements missing and companies need to rebuild their production facilities. He also noted, I'm in this industry for around 30 years, I've never seen anything like it. But let's dive deeper into the problems to understand why the engines are so vulnerable and what happened exactly in those incidents. To understand the problems with the engine and what causes the lower life cycles, we first have to know how a modern turbofan engine works. In a turbofan engine, the air can flow through the engine or outside of the engine. That's why it's also called the bypass ratio, because you compare the air flowing in the engine to the air flowing outside of the engine in the turbofan engine. When the air flows through the engine, the air passes the blades and then follows the low pressure compressor and high pressure compressor. After these two sections, the combustion chamber adds fuel to the hot air. After the combustion chamber comes the high pressure turbine which fuels the high pressure compressor and after that comes the low pressure turbine which fuels the fan and the low pressure compressor. One problem for the PW1500G from Pat & Whitney is that the stage 1 integrated rotor failed in the low pressure compressor compartment because of a high cycle fatigue crack that originated at the run out of an airfoil leading edge root radius. Furthermore, a correlating instability between stage 3 low pressure compressor and stage 1 integrally bladed rotor caused by an acoustic coincidence with the 2.5 bleed valve duct cavity. At high engine N1 speeds, the stage 3 integrally bladed rotor blade tips generate vortices turbulent airflow and given the right conditions, the turbulent airflow can create an acoustic tone as it passes over the 2.5 bleed valve duct cavity. Located immediately after the low pressure compressor stage 3 integrally bladed rotor, the acoustic tone drove a low pressure compressor stage 3 integrally bladed rotor blade first bending mode excitation that was then mechanically transferred through a low pressure compression module and excited a low pressure compression stage 1 integrally bladed rotor stiff wise bending mode that was present at the same approximate frequency. The resultant stresses on the low pressure compressor stage 1, integrally bladed rotor blades, exceeded material limits and subsequently led to crack formation and eventual progression to overload failure. The acoustic coincidence was caused by the Electronic Engine Control EEC, software V21172 and the low time rub in period on the low pressure compressor integrally bladed rotor blade tip clearances. 
the electronic engine control software V2-1172 changed the low pressure compressor inlet guide vane scheduled to rotate the IGVs in the close direction at specific high power engine conditions to improve engine stall or surge margin. The revised vane schedule inadvertently created conditions that were favorable for generation of the 2.5 bleed valve duct cavity acoustic tone and integrally bladed rotor mode excitation. New engines have tighter clearances between the low pressure compressor integrally bladed rotor blade tips and the outer air seals. The reduced clearance created unsteadily loading at the blade tip region and resulted in stronger acoustic coupling flutter response. After a rub in period, the clearance increases and the occurrence of flutter onset is reduced. Another incident that, that happened was an uncommanded dual engine shutdown upon landing which led to significant impact on braking when the aircraft landed. A subsequent investigation determined that the sequence of order throttle, increasing throttle, to maintain Mach number, immediately followed by pilot command to decrease throttle to idle, caused a transient disagreement between actual and commanded thrust. This disagreement triggered the thrust control malfunction detection logic and resulted in dual engine shutdown once the weight on wheel signal was activated upon landing. The installed electronic engine control full authority digital engine control software version latches default and allows the engine to continue operation as commanded but shut down the engine upon landing. Another incident happened when a Swiss A220 lost oil pressure because of a faulty O-ring seal on the engine's fuel oil cooler on 13th October 2018. A year later, in 2019, a Swiss A220-300 suffered an engine in-flight shutdown caused by a disintegrated low pressure compressor while climbing through 32,000 feet. In the same year, another incident occurred due to the stage 1 rotor in the low pressure compressor. That separated, causing a hole in the compressor case. At that point, Swiss must thought that their A220 is cursed. <laughs> The A220 engine is additionally more vulnerable when airlines operate regularly in a dusty and sandy environment. Why is a turbofan engine more vulnerable when dust and sand flows through the engine? That has to do with some minerals in the sand and dust. At temperatures of about 1500 to 2000 degrees Celsius, some minerals melt. This is in the first place no problem. But when an aircraft lands and the engine cools down, it becomes a big problem. Then the minerals re-solidify and can clog the fuel nozzle, corrode metal surfaces and the eroding compressor blades to name few. Maybe not one flight can cause a significant damage to the engines, but an A220 flew around 4 to 6 times per day at Egypt Air, which can cause over time a massive damage and a shorter economic life for the PW1500G. So you see, the PW1500 engine is an engine that caused a lot of trouble and caused probably a lot of overtime hours for the engineers to fix the problems on short notice. But that was not everything. Pritometne couldn't offer airlines enough replacement engines and rust developed much sooner than expected in the documents. That caused airlines a lot of additional costs for cancelled flight and compensation for passengers and a lot of waiting time for the A220 until they can fly again.